Hello, uh, welcome to Pre-Shift with Dylan Higgins. That's me. Uh, so today we're gonna go into greater detail specifically about fermented juices. Uh, as I mentioned before in the last one, um, all fermented or all alcohol is derivative of fermented juices of some sort. So today we're gonna focus on the ones that don't get distilled afterward. And by focus, I mean we're gonna talk briefly about each of the seven primary um, types of fermented beverage alcohol. And then uh, this will serve as sort of an introduction to the rest of them. Anyway, uh, hopefully this turns out to be the kind of thing that you can sit down, listen to, take some information, maybe you use it to sell a, a beer on the floor, or um, maybe you use it to do uh, in a restaurant that is, uh, or, or in a grocery store, or maybe you use it to... Uh, learn a couple really unusual words that really only apply to the alcohol world and uh, stump people at trivia night or whatever. Uh, whatever works for you, doesn't matter. So here we go. So uh, fermented beverage alcohols work like this. Um, yeast consumes sugar and the byproduct from that is gonna be uh, CO2, sugar, or alcohol, and heat. Um, there are seven sort of jumping off points for this conversation. I'm sure there are more fermented uh, fermented uh, juices in the world that people use uh, to consume and, and get a buzz, but uh, really even three of these are kind of a stretch um, so far as marketability goes. So the, we're going to focus on four of them that are big, and then the other three we'll talk about because they also contribute to other things that we're going to do. So the first one is beer. Beer is a huge category, uh, and in fact, if you go and talk to a whiskey distiller, they're going to refer to distiller's beer as uh, as sort of code or industry speak for what we also refer to as the mash. Um, as I mentioned earlier, alcohol comes from yeast-consuming sugar, so there's all, almost all sugar that we're going to consume comes from some form of plant life. There's one like very stark different, very stark example to the contrary. But uh, in terms of beer, we're talking about grain. And since we're talking about grain, there are really four primary contributing grains that are used to make beer. Uh, those being uh, barley as the primary, corn uh, as a very small percentage, rice usually as a filler, and wheat as the, uh, the primary second uh, second option. There's occasionally people who use rye, but that's very, very rare. Uh, anyway, so beer comes in two primary forms. Um, there's ale, which is the one we're going to see the most of so far as variety and um, micro-brew production. And the reason for that is because ale is a top-fermenting uh beer and it comes from Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the primary uh, yeast used for it. It also has a higher tolerance for al uh, alcohol content, heat, uh, well, and temperature, ambient temperature. So because of that, we can usually use that in a micro brew where you don't have to get super cold. The second uh, primary type of beer is called lager. Lager is produced with a bottom fermenting yeast called Saccharomyces uh, pastorianus and pastorianus uh, generally um, has a very much lower tolerance for alcohol and for temperatures so we have to keep the fermenting room cool and that's actually what lagering is is the, the process of barrel aging in a very cold room so we'll talk about that in greater detail when we get to lagers as a specific item um, primary contributing uh, elements here the Reinheitsgebot is the uh, German purity law, and we'll get into that in greater detail, but at the end of the day, what it says is there are only four ingredients that you need to make beer. Um, the grain, the yeast, water, and hops. Water is hugely important because water actually winds up being constituent of the, the, the largest percentage of the actual volume of what you're drinking. Um, and then the uh, the hops are usually a flavoring slash bittering slash uh, chemical stabilizing agent. Um, it is a, uh, the flowers of the hemp plant, which is relative to uh, is a relative of the um, 
the hemp plant. So hops and hemp relative. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, they often contribute floral notes and or citrusy notes. There are four noble hops, and we'll get into that in greater detail. Wine is a huge uh, secondary item. Um, in terms of volume consumed, it's, it's definitely right behind beer in the United States. Worldwide, it might be slightly higher, but we'll get into that in greater detail. Um, uh, the world of wine is split into three primary focal points. Those are um, still, sparkling, and sweet or fortified, however you want to word that. Um, still wines basically split up into red, white, and rosé. Sparkling wines are basically divided between Charma, uh, the Charmat or tank method and the Champagne or traditional method. And we'll get into those two methods in substantial detail when it comes time. Um, and then uh, the third version of, um, and then there's forced carbonation, but that's a different thing altogether. Uh, and then the, the, the third subset of wine as a general rule is the fortified slash sweet wine. And that gets broken down into late harvest actual fortified wines and maybe uh, like the secondary the, the secondary processes that result in sherry and again lots to go over there we'll get into that later um so we got those and then we've got uh, mead which is fermented honey and that one's going to be uh that's potentially the oldest alcoholic beverage that we've consumed um depending on who you ask and what the timing frame uh, time frame looks like on that and and from my knowledge it's the only one that comes from an animal uh so there's that um and again we'll we'll delve into that in greater detail later cider is uh cider could reasonably be argued as a wine because it's the product of a fruit um but because of its overall uh, physical properties, the way that it tastes, and the fact that it's generally lower in alcohol and it has a secondary fermentation, obviously, uh, we usually are more likely to associate it with beer. Uh, it is what it is. So we'll get into cider. Cider basically breaks down as uh, fermented apple juice. Um, and uh, there's a subset of cider referred to as peri, which is fermented pear juice. Um, those are the four primary types, um, though if you're in Japan, you would probably argue that the next one is the fifth, uh, is actually the number one, which is sake. That's a fermented juice of, uh, rice. Ridiculous process. There's all kinds of things that happen there. Uh, koji, uh, molds and, and various other things. And, and it's a, it's a very interesting deep dive that we can go into on that. Um, but rest assured, the, the bulk of it is going to be about um, about rice and the influence of mold in, in producing the sugars that need to come out of the starches in order to be consumed and turned into an alcoholic beverage. So there's that. Uh, and then we've got pulque, which is the fermented juice of the agave. Um, it's not really consumed as much as it could be, but... Um, it is the basis from which tequila and ricea and bacanora and, and uh, mezcal are derived. So it's worth looking at. Uh, and then there's kombucha, which is becoming more and more popular as, um, as time goes on. Uh, kombucha is basically, uh, again, a big, it's a fermented tea. Um, but it's a fermented tea that includes a lot of other uh, biochemistry in order to achieve the alcohol that's in there. Um, it's intriguing, if not for market presence, uh, at least in terms of being an absolutely insane and, and literally wild uh, drink to consume. So uh, that's the seventh one that we'll get into uh, somewhere down the line. Uh, obviously, I'm going to spend a lot more time on beer, a lot more time on wine, and uh, we're also going to go over distilled spirits. So we'll do a quick little brief overview next time on distilled, and then we'll get it. Then we'll start getting into the deep dives. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, or if there's anything else I should go over in the comments, please leave it there, and I'll be happy to uh, do so.
Hope you have a great shift. And I'll talk to you soon.